everyone and welcome back for another installment of Kitchen Science with me, Miss Liz, one of your librarians here at the library. Today's science experiment using items that we can find in our kitchen is going to involve germs. For today's science experiment, we are going to be making our own germ model so that we can see how germs work and how they get stuck on us. And then we are also going to perform a science experiment using some soap and some pepper to see how soap works from keeping our hands clean and keeping ourselves safe from all the germs. So if you sign up for this grab and go through the library, what I'm gonna have you do is grab your kit with all the materials provided and head on down to your kitchen with me. If you weren't registered for this program and you just wanna do some kitchen science with us, that's totally fine too. We are gonna go through all of the ingredients and all of the supplies needed for today's experiment so that you can find these items in your kitchen at home and do the experiment along with us. If that sounds good and you're ready for some experiments in your kitchen, follow me into my kitchen and we are gonna get this experiment started. To make our own germ model, you are going to need two items from your grab and go kit. The first is the Ziploc bag with half a cup of flour in it plus a quarter teaspoon of salt. That's gonna be found in the Ziploc bag. And you're also going to grab a handful of Q-tips. If you're doing this along at home with us, grab those items and you'll be good to go. Additionally, you're going to want to grab a large mixing bowl to put your concoction in. You're also going to want to grab a, about a cup of water. We're going to add this in a little bit less, a little bit more, depending on how much we need. You're going to want to grab a pair of scissors. You're going to want to grab something to mix with so you can get a spoon or a spatula. And then you can add in food coloring if you want your germ to be a different color. This step is totally optional and up to you. So if you have it, great. And if you don't, no big deal. We are going to start this experiment by putting all of our stuff to the side, cleaning our area, and making sure we have a nice, clean experiment space to work upon. The first step of our experiment is going to be taking that half cup of flour and that quarter cup of teaspoon and putting it in our large mixing bowl. Make sure you get all of the pieces out to make sure that you can make a nice, big germ model. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take your spoon or spatula or whatever you're using and mix it up just to make sure that the salt and the flour are mixed well together. Then we are going to take a little bit of water and pour it in slowly. This is because we don't want our dough to be too sticky or too dry. So it's always easier to add in more water as you need it than to add in too much at the beginning and have to now add in more ingredients to get it the consistency that you want. So I like to do it as a general rule of I pour for about three seconds stop pouring the water in and then taking my spatula and mixing it around for a few and then seeing if I need more water or if maybe I'm good. So feel free to try this technique at home or you can pour it in for one second, whatever you feel comfortable with. Take your time adding the water though because we don't want to rush this step. So here you can see I'm doing it. One, two, three, stop. And then I stir it around and see if I need to add more. So take your time with this step, do it slowly and we will meet back once we have our germ-like consistency that we need. You know you'll have the perfect dough to go with this experiment once you can start playing with it in your hands, almost like it's Play-Doh. So you should be able to throw it around and knead it a little bit and there shouldn't be anything sticking to your hands. Once you have your dough, it is time to add in your food coloring if you would like to make it a color. Again, this step is completely and totally optional. You can do it if you want, but it is not necessary for this experiment. So how I like to add food coloring to my dough is I like to put my dough in a plastic bag, the one that actually our flour came out of, and pour the food coloring in there. That way I can mix it around in a sealed bag to keep my hands dry and to keep the food coloring off my kitchen counter, but you can mix it in the bowl if that's easier with your hands or your spoon. Feel free to do it however you want. Um, this is just a personal preference of mine that I wanted to show you all, but you are more than welcome to mix it in any way you want. So I take that bag, I mush it around, and then once it's the green color that I want, because that's the color of my germ today, I will take it out of the bag and we will move on to the next step. If you are not doing the food coloring, feel free to fast forward this a little bit and we will meet on the other side. As we're moving along with today's experiment, I'm gonna let you in on a 
thing that happened in my experiment kitchen. Um, I noticed as I was adding the food coloring that my dough was just a little bit too wet for my liking. It was sticking to my hands, almost like raw cookie dough. So what I did was I emptied it out of that Ziploc bag that I was mixing in. And what I had to do was I had to grab more flour and add it in because my mixture was too wet and I wanted to dry it up. So if your mixture is too wet at home, all you got to do is sprinkle in some flour and you should be good to go. And if your mixture happens to be a little too dry, you can add in more water to make it almost um, that dough like consistency. So definitely play around with it. As we all know, science is all about experimenting, guess, test, and revising, and just keep working on it until it's perfect. So here I am um, molding my green food coloring. You will see me add in flour shortly for me to get that dough consistency that I want but you should be able to play with this dough to know that it's perfect and it shouldn't be sticking to your hands while you're doing that. Now that I've added a little bit more flour to my science experiment, I am ready to start forming it into the Play-Doh ball that I need my germ model to be in. So once again, I'm going to throw in a little bit water, a little bit more water, I'm sorry, because it's feeling a little bit dry, mixing it around, and it is nearly perfect. Again, you know yours will be ready when it starts to feel like Play-Doh and that you can play with it in your hands, and it will take a shape, but it's not sticking to anything and it's not crumbling apart. So... Here it is. I'm going to show you how I get it into the nice bowl. You're going to knead it with your fingers, just kind of like making it a little bit tough. And it will be almost ready for us to make our germ out of. Once my dough is ready to go, I am going to set it to the side. And we are going to grab some q-tips so again if you picked up the kit from the library grab the ones that were in your bag or if you're following along at home just go grab some q-tips so you can either start out this by cutting your q-tips in half with a scissor my scissor was not that great and as you could see my q-tip went flying or you can take your q-tip and bend it and almost snap it in half this was the method that worked best for me so this is what i'm going to go with but again, it's your science experiment, so do what works better for you and test out which you like the best. Once all of your Q-tips are now split in half, you are going to take your ball of dough that you made and you're going to start sticking them in all over your dough ball to make it so that the um, dough has spikes that almost poke out. And you can put in as many or as little as you want. It's your germ. As long as it's got some of them in there, you will have a perfect germ model. So now for a little bit about the science behind why we are making our own germ model. What we are actually building, I know I keep calling it a germ model, is actually a model of a virus. And the idea is to show you what a virus molecule looks like up close, like what scientists would see if they were using a telescope to see what a certain virus would look like. What I want you all to notice as you build your germ models at home is how easy it is for germs to get stuck on stuff. Not only does it have pointy things sticking out of it, which are represented by our Q-tips, that can get caught on things such as our clothing, our hands, our jewelry, or whatever you're wearing, but there's also a sticky center that germs have that make it easy to attach to your plates or your forks when you drop it on the floor or anything like that. So this is just how you can see how a germ acts and functions. If you want to save your germ model to show your family how germs work or anything like that, feel free to set it aside and let it sit in the air for a few days and it will harden. So now that we know what a germ looks like, it is time to move on to our next experiment. So for our second experiment, we are going to look at how to keep germs away. You are going to need some dish soap, which was that orange stuff in your grab-and-go bag, as well as some pepper, 
which was the black stuff that I'm sure you could smell from a mile away. You're also going to need a shallow dish that has a lip on it because we're going to put some water in it. And then you're going to need some water for this experiment. So if you're doing this at home, grab those items and we're ready to begin. So you're going to start this experiment by taking that water and pouring it into the base of your dish. Just fill it up to the top of where the dish lip starts and make sure not to spill any. If you do, wipe it up. That's okay. We like a nice clean experiment area. It's just water. Then you're going to take your pepper and you're going to put it all into that water. So what I like to do is I like to take a scissor and cut the corner of the Ziploc bag just like that and pour it in nice and slow so that I can make sure I don't spill pepper anywhere. Um, and you will see it kind of spread out in the water. So in this experiment, this pepper is actually going to act as our germs. So as you can see, they are everywhere. And that's just like germs in real life. They're everywhere and that's okay. So if I don't have anything on my hands and I take my finger, I'm going to dip it in the water, which I want you all to do at home as well. And you will notice that on your finger, a lot of pieces of pepper are getting stuck to it. That is because I am touching those germs and you are touching those germs and it's getting all over us. And that's okay. So play around with this for a few minutes. See how many germs you can get on your hands with nothing on them. And then we're going to see how soap works to combat those germs. Feel free to keep playing with this as much as you want. You will notice over time that you may have to dump out your plate and start over with a new one because depending on the amount of soap that gets in your dish, your pepper, aka your germs, will start to clump and they won't um, be repelled by the soap as much anymore. This is just because we're using kitchen stuff. So you can always dump it out and start fresh if you want to keep going. Um, if not, we are going to move on to the last portion of our grab and go bag. That's going to be super quick for a game that you can play at home as a family. And then we're going to wrap up today's kitchen science. So the last thing that you will find in your grab and go bag is a game that I found from a website called Teach Beside Me. This game is called Germ Busters and it is for you and your family to enjoy at home. The instructions as well as the game board, the pieces, and a really cool poster about hand washing that you can stick in your bathroom is included in this kit. If you did not sign up for this program and you would like a copy of the game, please feel free to send me an email at the email address below and I will be happy to send you a PDF for you to print out and make it at home so that you can play it as a family. Thank you all so much for joining me for today's kitchen science experiment. I hope you learn a thing or two about germs and some useful knowledge that you can now tell your family to show them what you learned. If you did this experiment and made your own germ model or played with the soap to test out how it works, please feel free to send me any pictures you or your grown-up may have taken to show me what you did at home and how your experiments came out. I would love to see them and see what experiments you did and how yours came out. Thank you all so much for joining me for today's experiments and I will see you next time for our next installment of Kitchen Science. Have a good one and we will see you soon at the library. Bye!